Welcome to SNM Games and thank you very much for helping us reach 81% funded in three days. This is amazing. So please keep sharing and help us reach our goal. We can smell the freshly printed cardstock. So fantastic job there all of you backers. Uh, thank you very much and if you share or if you contribute uh, we will really appreciate it. I'll show you how you can play the Rift Wars miniatures game solo. And that's why I am doing it solo, because Martin is doing something else. So today, the Rift Wars, we have the card game and we have the miniatures game, two in one. And um, the beauty of this is that you can use the character cards from the card game as characters when you're playing the miniatures game. And that's exactly what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to do scenario one from the solo scenarios where we are, or not we, uh, the uh, solo AI player is going to escort Greta the Grey as a prisoner across the table and off the other side. Whereas me, as the party that previously had Greta, we are going to have to save her because we don't want her to tell the guards or the authorities about our plans and what we're doing. So I have of course built a warband or a party made out of uh, undeads because you know I love my undeads and using uh, city guards as the guys that are escorting Greta and uh, we have of course used the Mantic models because we have uh, a licensing agreement with the Mantic models to use their fantastic models and images in our game. So thank you very much Mantic Games um, and especially Matt Gilbert. Thank you for being an awesome guy. Um, so uh, should we take a look at the table? Okay so as the scenario says we are uh, near Flembriar Forest which is all the way to the northeast of the map and I have uh, thus laid out a section of uh, tiles from uh, PD on Terrain which we also have uh, permission to use in our videos and of course uh, as uh, images for the rulebook and whatnot because uh, George is a fantastic nice guy so thank you very much George um, Okay, so this is the uh, table, it's a 3x3 three three table. The uh, party that I am going to, uh, well, I have to get rid of them to free uh, Greta. It is uh, consisting of 4 models with a total value of 10. And it says in the rulebook that you can do a game with 10 points for a hard game, 12 for an easier and 15 for a very easy experience. So I'm of course going for the hard uh, mode, <laughs> so I will show you my party after I've shown you this party, which are the ones escorting Greta. So we have, all of them are city guards, they are, well, these two are fairly good with the bows and have melee, and these guys are not as good with the bows, but they still have both bows and melee values. Uh, no special abilities are used in this scenario. Um, and as you can see, uh, we have tried to simulate Flambriar, or at least entering Flambriar Forest. Uh, now normally uh, you would have um, seven pieces of terrain, because there's a total of seven models here. But I wanted to make it a little bit more interesting, so I've added more terrain that I really don't think will make much of a difference. But, you know, it's always good to look at beautiful tables when we play. And I was thinking like, hmm, this is really easy because I can just pick off these guys with my ranged attacks. If I take a lot of magic users, I can just blast them from afar. From afar. But of course since they are in base contact with Greta, they are considered in a melee with her and she is on my side and my party is not from the darkness faction so I am actually not allowed to shoot into a melee so um, I can't actually do that so I will actually have to go in and assault them uh, and then I'm in the risk of having to fight three or four guys at the same time 
So that will be very interesting. Okay, so let's take a look at my forces. Here we go with my Undead Party. As always, Ghoul is an amazing character with his three fight. He's hindered by that he cannot be in a party unless there's a Necromancer or Undeads only, and I have gone for the Undeads only. I have Rear the Winged Death, which is also fantastic, uh, in that he can also fly. And Hatsu the Hunger, which is uh, very good as well. This uh, spellcraft value gives me one extra action to do on Hatsu. Not sure if it's a girl or a boy, you can choose for yourself. I tend to say her. Um, so this is how the table looks, and I have positioned my models over here. This is Hatsu, trying to get some cover from that uh, tree over there. And then I have Weird the Winged Death on top of this cliff, because, you know, he can fly. And finally I have Ghoul over on this side. Now, the scenario states that I have to deploy at least 20 inches away from the um, city guards, which I have done, so all my models are more than 20 inches away. Okay, so we are ready to start turn one. Uh, as you can see, my models are positioned over here, here and over here, and they are all in cover. Uh, the city guards will start turn one. And the scenario specifies that they will move one time each, bringing Greta along with them. And Greta uh, is just, uh, she's not doing anything by herself. She has a set of rules if uh, something happens that uh, makes her end up alone, uh, which hopefully will happen. Uh, so these guys have a move value of uh, four plus the one extra. So all of them will move one inch, no, not a <laughs> five inch. And they will also bring Greta with them, so that she is still in base contact and uh, coming nicely along. Now, this is the first thing they do in their turn one. And now the turn will go over to the um, solo player, which will be me. And I will, of course, find something cool to do with them. But for the next turn, turn two, they have a set of rules now which will let a couple of them go and shoot, maybe there will be some charging, uh, action will happen. So let's see what the Undeads can do. Okay, ready for the solo player, it's turn one and it is my face now. So I will begin with moving Ghoul, he has a total move of seven for each token that he spends. So I have my pool here of five tokens, I'm gonna give him one and move seven and that's not enough so I will give him another one to move a total of up to 14 but it will be like 10 or 11 and he's gonna take cover here or not take cover he's gonna hide behind the three uh, of course losing the in cover token next up I'm gonna move Vir the winged death he's going to get one token and he's just gonna move down here and take cover behind this tree. So we're kind of getting ready to assault them or see what the guards do on their turn. And next up, I'm going to remove the take cover token from Hatsu. And Hatsu is actually going to get two tokens as well. And you know what? I'm actually going to move Hatsu six inches around here and then with the second token I'm actually going to I'm gonna bank that because then I can I can either take cover with one of these if I'm being shot at which is one of the reactions uh, these guards can do uh, I cannot ready them if I'm uh, being charged that is something I have to do right now you can of course sort of cheat if you look at the reactions for the city guards so that you know what they will do uh, but you know what's the fun in that I have spent four tokens I have moved up and I'm ready to face the uh, onslaught okay so having checked the NPC uh, behavior table uh, there are two enemies which are pretty close but this model over here is the furthest away from both of them 
Uh, this one is only 9 inches away from him and 10 inches from him, which means that the closest model to an enemy is him. And that means this guy, uh, among number 14 and 17, which are the two guys in front, it's uh, described in the rules, he will then make a move towards the closest enemy and shoot. So farthest away, but move towards the closest. So he has a move and shoot of 2, and I don't think we can, we can't, it's not possible to move him in a way such that I can get a clear shot. So I will just move him towards, as the rules say, not bringing a Greta along with me, because this overrides um, his uh, action. And he's then going to do a shoot action. And as we discussed in my turn, I saved one action token to be able to take cover. Now, I will check the range, and now it's only 8 inches, so if he's of course benefiting from short range when shooting. Uh, I will then spend the last action that Ghoul can do to take cover with him. He sees the impending danger and, you know, huddles down and getting ready to pounce next turn. So, the base then is 4 to hit, 5 to hit because of the 3 that gives the cover, and 6 because he's in cover. Now, if I'm really unlucky, this guy will roll 2 sixes and he is actually dead. Well, he is dead already, but you know what I mean. So let's see what he can do, the city guard against Ghoul, rolling nothing, it's absolutely nothing, a 2 and a 3. Okay, for the next uh, city guard, uh, his, or well, the next thing you check, because there are sets of rules for these guys, and these guys, they are um, these are the guys that don't have as good of a ranged uh, value. So the two guys with the range value I position in front to more easily tell them apart, and the other guys are in the rear. So uh, for the next guy, it's this one. You check which enemy is the closest one, and that is of course this one again. Uh, he's just short of uh, 10 inches, but it also states I shall move two moves, and he moves four plus his bonus of one, and then a second. I will stop just out of uh, out of one, so I don't uh, end up locked in combat or in melee with him, and then I will spend, or then I will do the last action, which is to charge into combat. So this is three actions for him. Moving into combat with him, and the sad thing is, of course, he only has one die while he has three. But I can still get lucky, and uh, you know, only need a four. So let's see if the city guard can take out the ghoul. That would, in case, be very good for the city guards. So on a six, he does. So ghoul is wounded, let's put a marker to remind us, and then the ghoul will of course fight back, but he has three dice! The only way he can, you know, make this the best option is to roll two sixes and kill him instantly now. So let's see if ghoul can do double sixes, no, but he scores the necessary five and wounds him, and as always with 148 fantasy, you fight until you're done. There's no waiting and taking turns and dragging it out. This is bloody, it's brutal, it's over soon. City Guard strikes again. Second round of combat, scoring a six. Ghoul is dead, and the ghoul strikes back. Can the City Guard survive? Is it possible? No. There comes a six for Ghoul. So both of them is dead. I will position uh, the City Guard where I want to anywhere along my base and I will actually position him over here in base contact with me well no yeah oh my god all of us died both of us died doesn't matter if I'd survived that would have been a good thing to do to provide some cover from this side but since we both died it really doesn't matter so wow that was really good turn for the city gosh actually so, Ghoul is gone, I got two characters left, maybe I was a bit too cocky about this. Huh, okay, let's see what the uh, the rest of the guys do. Okay, so the next uh, guys that are left, it is one guy with a bow and one guy considered a melee guy. They will just move forward 
unless there is an enemy within 20 inches which there is and that means the guy with the ranged ability which is this guy he's going to move five inches and take a shot at the, the closest enemy and he's going to move five and he will also bring greta with him so greta is actually going to end up here and then he will take a shot and of course this shot here is within 10 inches this is also within 10 but he has no cover so it's fair to say that the city guard which has the number 17 on the card is going to take two dice and shoot at the uh, Hatsula Hunger with two dice and since it's short range there's no cover I cannot take any uh, cover action since I don't have any tokens left uh, he's gonna hit me on a four and that's a hit and I'm wounded oh my really really am I gonna lose this against the AI holy smokes okay then the next guy he is gonna also move up five and remaining in base contact with Greta and that ends the uh, city guard turn and then we'll go over to me again um, as you can see we could have made the move even further but that again I think would make the game even harder uh, and also there is something about you actually trying to protect the prisoner and moving casually no not casually cautiously <laughs> towards your goal and trying to protect uh, the prisoner instead of just charging headlong and maybe going into a a, an ambush or a trap or something uh, so far I have one wounded one dead city guard have one dead now of course this guy is possible to shoot at since he's no longer in base contact with Greta but these guys I cannot shoot at them I will have to charge them so I only got one character to use and that is weird really wow this is hard Okay, I have a killing plan, I hope. I will start by using, uh, well, it's the only guy I got, it's weird. <laughs> He's gonna move seven, which uh, he can do. He can fly, but then I have to count vertically. So he'll move one and then a further six, bringing him here. So that's one token to do that. Now, if Hatsu the Hunger, would have been uh, alive or not wounded I could have cast haste perhaps if I'd moved uh, and been within 10 to get one extra action but no such luck so I'll spend one to move the seven and then I'm actually gonna take a pot shot at the closest uh, not the closest because I can't shoot at those which are in um, base contact with Greta but I can shoot at this guy, he's within uh, 10 inches, but the rules also state that the first time they are shot at with a ranged attack, they will take cover. So he will take cover as a response to my shooting, but I will have one die hitting on a five. I might get lucky, and I'm not. Ah! And then I'm gonna do my last action with rear. Three actions is limited, but it's also very, very cool. That it is a bit tight uh, I will now charge in and fight with um, I'm gonna go for this guy I'm gonna get behind them because then they have to start moving backwards well at least one of them the other guy will continue moving off with Greta but then I will get Hatsu back next turn and yeah maybe we can do it okay so he's gonna charge in seven inches and as you know when you charge you get that free attack and as with the, the ghoul he has three dice so I will roll three dice hoping for two sixes instantly killing him I score five at least so he's wounded but as you all know combat is deadly and brutal so he fights back since he has the melee value so he rolls one die, wounding me on a four plus. He rolls a six, we're both wounded. This is not good, not good at all. Then Weir fights back with his three dice. And that's the headshot, but it's too little too late. He still gets to fight back since combat is in simultaneous. But luck, if I have luck on my side, 
he will not be able to score a 4 plus and wound me. No, it's a 2! Woohoo! Okay, now I will do something clever. I will position him. Because, you know, you're in the melee, you're fighting, moving around. I will position him in base contact in front of me so that I have cover or at least they have to move around me. But Weird is now wounded, which means he has to pass the next turn. Uh, Hatsu has passed uh, the turn, so he will now get a take cover uh, uh, token instead. And I bank two tokens. Two tokens I've banked. So that's pretty good. But now I am afraid because now I have two guys that can be attacked. Okay, let's see what happens. Okay, this is this is gonna be bad. This is gonna be bad. Um, okay, so the takeover from this guy is removed. He's dead. But this is this is not going to go well for me. I can assure you. Uh, I got one guy with it, which is good at ranged, and one guy which is designated as a melee guy. The instructions tells me that he is going to move two inches, move and shoot, and target the closest model. So he's actually just going to move over here so that I can clear the cover I put for myself. So that's just gonna be a simple move over here. Actually, it wouldn't really matter if I move towards him because as long as you're within two inches of the cover, you ignore it. But anyway, I have now a clear line of sight to uh, Vyr. The good thing, of course, is... No, it doesn't help. Since it's within 5 inches as well, my take cover doesn't work. So he will actually have two dice hitting on a 4. I actually think I'm going to lose this game. So, City Guard has moved and sh move and shoot action 2 inches, rolling two dice, hitting on 4s. Scoring a 1 and a 3! Okay, so that's a miss! Okay, so the next action is uh, to do a ready action. So he will shoot once and then do a ready action, which is quite powerful since he will then be able to attack before he can be charged. And potentially, you know, kill the other guy. Um, okay. So, I got one guy left, one city guard left, and he is uh, programmed to charge the closest enemy model if there is one within 10 inches, instead of continue moving with Reda. And of course, Vir is within 10 inches. So he will just swing around the cover and charge into base contact. Of course, Vu is dangerous because he rolls three dice. But this city guard only needs one four plus to make it. So the city guard charges and attacks and rolls a six, killing Vu. But of course, Vu is allowed to fight back with his three dice. If I roll double six now, that would be fantastic. No, nothing. He's not even wounded. Oh my lord. Oh. Okay, this is seriously going the wrong way. Oh dear, I guess I underestimated the AI of this game. Um, okay, so Hatsu is back from the wounded. I will remove the take cover uh, token and I will give Hatsu two tokens to move 12 inches. And 12 inches should bring me into base contact with uh, the guard that is not in... Yes, it does. It brings me into base contact. And I will gamble that I can take out this guard. If I'd been a bit more lucky, then we would have wounded him. But no such luck. So Hatsu is moving in there. And spending two tokens on that. I have a limit of three since uh, she has, or he has the, he or she, uh, has the spell craft icon giving me one extra action. So what I actually could do, you know what? I'm gonna... Ah, no, I can't do that. Yes, I can. I will stop just short of... I will backtrack once, so I'll move once. Then I will actually do a sneaky thing and 
cast one spellcraft at this guy. Actually, I have to clear Greta with uh, one inch, so I will go here. And I will try to get him on a six. If I can do that, then I will have a field day. And no sixes are rolled! Okay, then I will move my last six inches into base contact, setting off the charge. I've spent three tokens on Hatsu. This is all in. Oh, this is not going good. I need to roll two sixes and take that guy out immediately. I only roll one five, but it's enough to wound him. He will strike back. He has only one die. Wish me luck. Oh, he moves Hatsu. He moves. He wounds Hatsu. And Hatsu was wounded from before, so Hatsu is dead. And I lose the game. Oh my lord. How is that possible? Wow. Okay. I will do a short uh, summary. Okay. So that was brutal. I got beaten in my own game. Ha! Huh? What about that? I really thought I was gonna have this, but as you can see, it is pretty hard. Um, uh, please note that these rules are not 100%, we're still fine-tuning things, so there might be slight changes uh, in the release rulebook, so just keep that in mind, because this video is made before uh, everything is done, uh, of course, so just keep that in mind. Uh, some slight uh, changes will maybe be made um, but yeah I, I really like it that you can you know set up the game grab some models mantic models if you have them there will be an expansion later on which is based uh, almost entirely on uh, mantic models from the Vanguard series which is very very cool um, so I hope you enjoyed this short video showing you how you can play solo and maybe you will have better luck than me. And please support us on our Indiegogo. Link in the description. Bye!